Hello and welcome back to TechLux Training. We're talking again about the Pivot Q512 console. This is module number two, programming. Module number one was all about how we set the console up to get ready for this. And module number three is going to be about playback. But let's get right into programming your Pivot Q512. Before we start programming, let me go through a concept that you're going to need to understand before we really can get into this. It's the concept of on, off, and zero. There are different types of consoles, just like there's different types of everything in life. There's Q stacking consoles, there's Q tracking consoles, you can busk, you can play them. It's a bunch of different ways you can do it. Our Pivot 512 is at heart a Q stacking console. And what that means is there's all kinds of different faders that can control all kinds of different lights or all kinds of different parts of any one light light. So when we go to locate the light in the console, and that we're going to do by selecting the light and hitting locate. When we do that, that's loading values into all the different parameters of any given light or any group of lights. So when we start off, everything has a value. Now, pretty much when you look at a parameter or any light, if it's got something more than 1%, it's on. You know, that's the on and the off part. When it's on, it means that the dimmer's up, maybe there's a color, a gobo, the pan tilt, whatever. It's got a value to it. The hard part is the off and zero and the difference between those. Generally, when we go ahead and take away a value, so let's say you put the color in, you take it back out again so the color's out or it's clear or no color. At that point, you like to think that the color's off, but it is isn't. It's actually at zero. And what's really important about that is when we come into doing the Q stacking. If I decide that I want to have one fader that's maybe got all the color chases for a group of lights, I've got another fader that's maybe got all the movements or the gobos, and I want to break these up so I can manually play my console, I need to separate out the parameters that are being controlled by that fader. So when I record the fader that's got the movements and the one that's got the gobos and the one that's got the colors in it, I need to make sure that only the values for that parameter or that function are in that fader. Now, I realize that's an advanced programming thing. You know, why are we doing that now? We can do that later. Well, because at this point, you have to understand in programming the difference between off and zero. If we do not give that value at all to the parameter and we leave it off and it's not there, there's no number there, basically we're telling the board to ignore it. So what happens is if you go through and let's say you select your light and you just start programming, you grab the light and you move the pan tilt around and get it to where you want it and you give it some intensity, you give it a color, that's fine, you record the cue. But then when you come running back around, all of a sudden you had another cue that maybe had a gobo in it and one had a prism, etc. When you come running back Back around to the beginning, the gobo and the prism are still going to be there. Why? Because you left the values for those things off. The board's doing exactly what you told it to do, but you've got to remember early on that zero is actually a value. And that's why it's so important if you're just recording cues and you want what you see right now, sort of a WYSIWYG thing, what you see is what you get. If you want what you see on the stage, you need to put in zeros to something that isn't there. Otherwise, it's just going to roll over them. So this is why the locate button is so important. Locate will load all the values of all the parameters and what you see is what you get. By the way, this can also extend to other fixtures. So for example, if I start out programming my show with a bunch of moving lights and then later on I add some cues that have some color changers in it into the cue, because remember cue can be all of your lights together. If in the very beginning, I do not have what I call a hard cue, a cue that basically says, hey, everybody go away or everybody go to a preset, then again, when you run the show around, there's nothing telling the other lights when they need to go away. So this is something you need to think about in programming. You need to know the difference between on, that's pretty simple, but off and zero. When a value is off, it's not there at all. Nothing's telling it to go away. When a value is zero, that's telling the color, the gobo, the iris, whatever, to go away. All right? There's your important safety tip of the day. Now, let's get back to the actual programming. In the first module, we patched up our console and got it all ready with all the different fixtures. One of the things we want to do to make our life easier is take some of the fixtures and put them together into groups. A group is just that. It's a way to quickly select a bunch of fixtures. Maybe they're all of your front of house fixtures or all of the stage drive fixtures or all of the club fixtures, whatever they could be. We can make up groups. And we simply do that by selecting 
the fixtures we want and then I'm going to go in and hit store we're going to be using that a lot and the one option that we want in store is group and already I've got a group name up there so instead of group two we'll well, you know what, let's call group one. We'll start right there. You can name this thing anything you want. Obviously, the better description for you, the better. Go ahead and hit enter. Now I have a group. I can toggle between fixtures and groups. Clear. When I go into group, if I choose group one, we go back to fixture. We can see the lights that I selected have now all been selected together. So now that we've got our lights all sorted out, we've got the groups ready, the main thing we want to do is know how we can manipulate or adjust the different functions of the light. So let's start with a very simple color changing fixture. Now what I always do to start is I locate. This is really important about what I was talking about earlier about values. I have just loaded values into all the parameters of that fixture. It is now fully set up. So everything that I have in that fixture is going to be recorded into the queue. This is where it would come back later if I only wanted certain parts. But let's go ahead and leave it so I've located it, which turned the light on. Now that it's on, I can choose colors and I can go in and set what I want. So let's say I just want this to be green. Turn all the other colors down there. It's a beautiful green. Uh, this is a very simple fixture. It's red, green, blue. I can do three different functions with it. So that's about the simplest thing we can do with an LED fixture. So a little bit more complicated light is going to be a moving head. Again, I'm going to take the light and locate it and he'll come right up there. Now we get to use something fun. We get to use a joystick. That's for the moving heads. Now one of the things that's really really nice about the pivot is if you don't want to use a joystick we can choose pan tilt and we can actually do it off of the slide controller also. So there's a lot of different ways. As a matter of fact we can even go in and do number entry. Let's say we want to do zero. There's three different ways we can set the pan tilt of this light. But let's get it up here so we can see it. And because it is a moving light, we've got control of our intensity. We've got control of the shutter. We can go into the colors option and go through the different color sets. Or we can go under gobos and do the gobo selection. Once we've got that, we can focus it up a little bit. There we go, and even rotate it. So now that I've got that where I want it, I'm going to go back to the LED panel I had in the first place, and I'm going to make sure he's still that green. And that's my look I want right there. I've now created a basic look. So at this point, we're going to go ahead and store directly to the queue. That's the quick way to do it. Now you notice when I hit store, there's a bunch of other options up here. Intensity, color, gobo, pan, tilt. Those are presets. If I like, for example, the pan tilt or where this light is pointing, I can store the pan tilt and that'll save it as a position. So we'll call it pan tilt one, enter. Now what's really kind of neat about this is if we clear it, let me reselect just this light again, which is going to be the vector LED and we're going to locate him. And let's go into the palette for pan tilt, and there's pan tilt one, and he went right back to where he was when I recorded him. So that's something else we can record. Also under store, we have snapshots. That's a way of doing a quick holder, and we have the groups that we talked about earlier. So once we've strung together a bunch of cues, now we have a show. Let's look at that. So we recorded one cue. Let's go ahead and put a couple more in here just to have a little bit of something else to play with. Let's take this guy and we'll get rid of the green and the blue and we'll just make him red. And we'll take our vector lead over here and we're going to locate him again and we'll give him a color. And you know what? Let's go back into that position that we had. And we'll even tip him down a little further. There we go. It's our bright hot day with the sun. Let's call that our next cue. And let's record even a third cue. At this point, I want the fixture here to go to, there we go, a nice blue with a little bit of gobo also. Oh, there you go. I love that gobo. Haven't used it enough. And let's match our other fixture to blue. Remember, I'm just selecting the fixture. I'm going into colors. I'm choosing blue, turning off the red. There we go. We're going to make that as another cue. And now I need to have a blackout, which is really pretty simple. 
I take this guy and I turn him off, but I've given all the values. Remember, we talked about the fact I need him to go to zero. If I simply erase the values and put in nothing, the light may not go away when I run the queue, but I actually want it to go away. So I'm going to select that, and I'm going to select this guy and set his dimmer down, and I'm going to store him as a queue. Now I'm going to clear my programmer, and I'm ready to play back my queues. Now, in the very simplest, most basic fashion, I've created a show. I can run the queue, run my next queue, run the third queue, and then run the blackout. Now that I've got that and everything is ready in my console, we can talk about getting a little bit fancier. We can talk about things like effects and chases, and most importantly, queue timing, because right now, this is how long it takes to go between queues. Maybe I need to go a lot slower or a lot faster. So let's look at the queue itself and see what we can adjust in there. So from here, let's go into the queue list. And these are the four queues that I made. Now there's a bunch of things we can do inside here. I can highlight one of them, push and hold menu. And this brings me into different setups. But amongst other things, I can move the queue, rename the queue, copy the queue in the queue list. This is getting into a little bit more advanced programming that we'll talk about more later. But this is where we can do some of the manipulation of the queues and the queue list. Let's go back out and look at the queue. If I go into here, I can now control my fade in, wait, or fade out times by the appropriate slider. So right now, I'm going to set it to take 3.6 seconds to fade in, and let's give it a fade out time, too, of 2.9 seconds. Now, if I put a wait in there, it will automatically run into the next queue. If I put a delay in, it'll wait once I run that queue until it actually activates. So if we're watching the screen, we're down here in this queue, we're down here. Let's go back up to our first queue. There's our 3.6 second fade in, waiting 7.9 seconds. And a 2.9 second fade out, and that completes that queue. So now I've done a lot of automation within that queue, and this is something you can play around with as you get comfortable with the controller, but all of the queue functions can be changed right within the queue list itself. At any point, I can go back out to editor and still work with my lights. Also within the queue list, there's a couple of other features, like on the side here, we can change it to chase. And now when we go ahead and run the queues, you're going to notice it just advances through them. We can change that speed right here and slow it down. So one queue list can become a chase, or we can use a sequence. The difference between a chase and a sequence is a sequence will use the timing of each individual queue. Whereas the chase is an overall set time. So a chase is kind of like a machine where it just keeps going. A sequence has little timing built into everything. Or one of my favorites is live. This allows you to directly jump to any queue you want in any order within a queue list. And every single queue list can be set up individually, whether it is set up as a traditional queue list, a chase, a sequence, or running live off of the touch screen. Again, an incredibly powerful little controller. Now, one of the more exciting feature sets we can use are the effects engine. Release releases my cues. By the way, if I've got multiple cues running in different playbacks, press and release once and a playback will release just that playback. Or press and release twice will release everything in the system. So release is a really great button to know. But sometimes we want to work inside the effects engine. Let's choose my vector led again. I'm going to locate him. And I'm going to choose effects. Now, effects are something you kind of have to get your head wrapped around. But basically, let's do the most obvious, which is a pan tilt effect. And what I'm going to do is tell the pan to go from 0 to 77%. And I'm going to tell the tilt to go from 0 to about 50%. Then I can go in and change the period and the speed and the spread. The period is how quickly it moves. The spread is if you have more than one fixture, whether or not they all go together or they all kind of do a different thing. So now that I've got the effect going, I can record that into a queue just like I did any other function.
The effects engine is something you definitely want to work with quite a bit just to get the feel of some of the different things you can do. You can apply different effects to different fixtures. You can apply different effects to different parameters within a fixture. And within this light itself, if I want to go back out to the editor, I can take this guy and let's add a gobo to it while he's going. Oh, not that one. We've used that one enough. There we go. We'll run the daisy around, make the daisy rotate while it's flying. Wow, I wish you could see the magic that was happening here. Let's take our LED panel and locate him, and let's apply an effect to his color. And it's going to go through a slow color fade. So now I've got my moving head, running around with the gobo, running all kinds of different patterns. I've got my color fixture doing different color waves, and all this stores just like a cue. Store, put it in the playback, clear, and now when I run my cues, we had the first one that we did, the second one, the third, we had the blackout, and then we've got our big effect. That is the basic programming queue structure. So in this module, we discuss the different ways we can control the different functions of a fixture. We discussed a queue and how to load it, how to record it. We even discussed queue timing, and we did some fun stuff like playing around with effects. These are the most basic modules you can use to build a show. With this information, you should be able to go into a pivot console now and control all of the basic manipulations and then work with some of the features and the subsets to really build the show that you need on an incredibly powerful little controller. We'll see you again soon. Look for module number three and we'll talk about playbacks and shows. Have a great day.